Before his death, all these experiences of these long years come together in his head to form one question that he has not yet put to the doorkeeper. He beckons to him because he can no longer raise his cramped and stiffening body. The doorkeeper has to bend down to him, since the difference in their heights has changed drastically, much to the man's disadvantage. So what is it that you still want to know? asks the doorkeeper. You are insatiable. Surely everyone strives to reach the law, says the man. So how is it that no one but me has ever begged for admittance? The doorkeeper recognizes that the man is near the end, and in order to penetrate his failing senses, shouts, No one else could ever be granted admittance here, as this gate was just for you. Now I'm going to close it. I am currently reading the story The Trial, and I thought before the law would be fitting to analyze. I do want to note that my analysis of works like The Trial, The Castle, in America may come a bit later in the year because I want to take my time analyzing those, so it will take a bit more time to put those videos together. I also, since I've been studying Kafka all summer long, um, my my oldest daughter has also picked up some sort of, of love for Kafka in... Um, so in Winnie the Pooh, Pooh always goes, oh, bother. But uh, my oldest daughter has changed it from, oh, bother, to, oh, Kafka. And you can hear her saying it here. And then my youngest as well. Oh, Kafka. <laughs> Say it again. Ah, Kafka. When I read Before the Law, I pictured a sort of wanting to understand a divine law. A man wanting access past a doorkeeper to understand what is this law to guide him to what is good and what is evil. To understand what is the good and evil without contradictions. And perhaps he does this because he does not trust himself to know what is good or bad. There must be something behind the doorkeeper that gives some sort of finite answer. And like the man, how can we trust ourselves to know what is good or evil if we do not have something telling us what is? We say we strive to reach the law, but maybe only begging for it is not enough. To strive to understand the law would require some movement. The doorkeeper is only telling the man that it is possible, but not at present. But then says, if it is so enticing, then just try going in despite my interjection. But does the man try to move, or does he sit down on a stool and wait? Of course he tries bribing the doorkeeper, but the doorkeeper says, I'm only accepting this, so you won't think there's something you have not tried. But this man has not really tried to pass the doorkeeper, he is not moved toward it, only does frivolous acts to make it known that he does want to know the law. However, maybe this is possible. Maybe the man doesn't really want to know the law, only says he does, but he knows that if he understands the law, he would then be held by the standards of the law. If he is not held by the standards, and can claim he doesn't know exactly what is good or evil, then can this man be judged? He can simply say, Well, I tried to enter. You saw me trying to convince the doorkeeper with my bribes. I was striving toward good. But those are lies that we tell to ourselves. We know it is easier to not decide what is best for ourselves, to go through life with excuses instead of accepting that no one else could ever be granted admission here, as the gate was just for you. We do not see the inner movement of others striving toward the good, only our own, and so maybe one interpretation of this line would be that the person is the only one who can decide what is good and evil for themselves. No other person can tell me what is good or evil. I have to make that movement myself.
And not only that, but I have to want to make that movement, to strive to understand. Is the doorkeeper a representation of a barrier I may put up for myself? Am I guilty before the law because it is easier for me to act like I want to know righteousness than to actually be righteous?